I love you. I, I, I love you so much. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. I'm here in Penang, in Malaysia at IRE Tom, one of the biggest wet markets here. And just walking around and just check it out. It's Sunday morning. There's tons of people here. They're selling everything from, from veggies to clothing. You can get freshly butchered meats, coffee, fruits, basically anything your culinary hearts desire. Now, there are a couple of food stalls I hear that I must try here. But other than that, I'm just gonna walk around, enjoy myself. I'm gonna eat the heck out of this place. The first place we're at is an institution. I mean, started in 1946. Uh, the Asian math machine has failed me repeatedly. I think that's 72 years that these two sisters has cooked the curry meat or the curry noodles. And they're still at it today. This is like, the sweetest, sweetest ladies. So I got two different types of dishes they have here. One is more the soupy curry, and one is the stir fry noodles. And they both have curry in here, and this is a little more dry, it's a little more wet. Excited would be an understatement right now. First meal of the day, and I can eat at this legendary institution all the way in Malaysia. Yeah. I love you. I. I I love you so much. Seriously. When I first put this in my mouth, I felt like one of those judges on the anime, Food Wars. Like, seriously. Of course, without the weird clothes falling off stuff. But as soon as I put it in my mouth, it just, I don't know. I felt like I was, I was transported, just, just floating in the air, nestling in a cloud of curry. But my general gauge of food over the years has really been, how does it make me feel upon the first bite. Because I do believe that love at first bite, just like love at first sight, they do exist. And this... This is love at first bite, at second bite, third bite, and just keep falling in love over and over again after every single bite. The noodles are soft, two different types of textures. Rice noodles, obviously a little more tender. The curry sucker punches you out your tongue. Then you start tasting the slightly sweet, salty flavor of the shrimp. And after that, just a burst of heat from the spices. And it sort of acts like a gateway to all that spicy flavor that's gonna eventually hit you. And it's not overwhelmingly spicy, no, no, no. It's the kind of spicy that hits you, but for some reason, you, you keep begging it for more. I love that the tofu soaks up all that glorious curry. Everything in this dish is so ridiculously gentle. Cuttlefish, slightly chewy, but has a tender profile as well. Everything in here, they just work together to take you on this slightly sweet, savory, creamy expedition all the way to delicious land. Oh, the soupy one. I feel like this bowl, the sauce um, is not as thick, so it doesn't hang on to the noodles quite as much. You see here, the noodles colors are still nice and yellow. Wow, you know what else I love about this? I don't need to add any additional spice or anything. The amount of chilies they added here is absolutely perfect. It's spicy without being overwhelming. Coconutty, slightly sweet, creamy, spicy. Again, the sweet flavor hits you first, and then the spices just get you right here. The noodles, I feel like you need, you need to kind of get some soup and put the noodles on your spoon so you can get a bite of soup and noodles all at the same time. But this whole bowl, it's just so robust. You can taste the almost century of cooking experience and love that went into these noodles. Like when you have a dish that's so good, that's so good, you know you most likely will not be able to find it anywhere else in the world. And over the years of stuff that I've eaten, there are really good dishes, there are really great dishes, there are really excellent dishes. Then there are those transcendent dishes. You know, you know those dishes when someone asks you like, hey, what should I eat in Japan? Uh, Kobe beef. What should I eat in Malaysia? Uh, sister curry meat. Like it's just, it's just automatic because it, it, it's always in your heart, it's always on your mind. I still gotta eat so much food today. I'm still gonna knock out one more bowl of this. Oh yeah. That's gonna happen. It, it's their mother's recipe. That means this this is like a over a century year old recipe. 
just sitting here eating this between two living legends, I, I don't think I get any happier on this trip. I don't. Oh, it's good. Yeah. I like it. 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 I like I don't know what's in here. Let's go find out. I'm kind of like trying to be that parrot, you know, the follow my nose guy, but uh, hasn't led me, hasn't led me to good yeats yet. Um, I see a way out. Let's go. Following my nose, I smell something good over there. Oh wow! Look, he's making uh, fresh uh, paradas over there. Can we get a parada? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, I got a couple uh, of roti. This is the uh, roti egg planta. So it's bread with some planta, which is sort of like butter, and, and an egg inside. I don't think I've ever had a squared one before. It's like a blanket, like a buttery, flaky, eggy blanket. Sorry, I was kind of imagining somebody actually inventing a buttery, eggy, flaky blanket, and how good it would be. That is all sorts of flaky. Oh, oh yeah. Look how light that is. I can almost see through that. Oh man, it's buttery, it's eggy, and it gave me three different types of curries. I think this is the fish one. I think fish curry is my favorite. I love the fishy flavor with this, along with a little spice. This is one of my favorite things to get at any Malaysian restaurant when I was in New York, and just being able to eat it here, fresh, Dip it in the dough. I think it's all sort of creamy. Oh, wow, I almost like that better than a fish curry. Let's go for a little beef, a little dough. Oh, I was just thinking, I wish I had a bowl of that legendary curry noodle soup from before and to dip this in that. That would truly be legendary. Yeah, I'm not sad. Hey, roti banana. That cheer me up. This is actually the first time I'm having this. I know, oh, that's nice. Look, look at the flakiness of this thing. You gotta eat this fresh. That's delicious. I think it'd be more awesome if there's some ice cream here. I mean, it's good, but the ice cream will make it awesome. Hang on a second. Well, I uh, couldn't find the ice cream, but I found some chindao. Now, those of you guys are, uh, those of you guys from Malaysia, I don't know if you approve of what I'm doing right now, but uh, I think it's gonna work. So chandao is basically a shaved ice. Mm. Ah, nice and cold and creamy. Take my roti banana. Let's go for an icy punch. I think that works. It's not ice cream, but it's still a bit creamy because of the coconut. It's icy, the roti is flaky, it's a little sweet from the banana. You combine that together, give the Rachi a little moisture. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Again, if you can find some ice cream, definitely I would recommend the ice cream, okay? But if you can't, you want something a little sweet to add to this, it's not a horrible partner. That's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. All right, another legendary stall in this market is Assam Laksa, right here. Supposedly, if you come here, you gotta get some of this. Here we go. The other legendary bowl of noodle soup in this market, Assam Laksa. This, I've only had really good laksa in Singapore. This is really not what I expected. I walked up, uh, like I said, I saw a bunch of herbs and veggies, like a mountain of them. And just getting the laksa like this, um, it's not what I'm used to. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I, can't, I I guess I shouldn't assume what laksa should look like, but there's, there seems to be a lot of stuff here. I asked them what all this was, and they said that the, the brown stuff here, this is ground mackerel fish. The dark ground sauce kind of in the middle. This is uh, this is sort of a, a shrimp paste made from like the, 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 the innards of a shrimp. Wow, look at this. Beautiful pearl white rice noodles. And the soup, the laksa soup is not overly thick. It's, it's actually quite soupy. Let's try the broth. That was just okay. 
Obviously, I'm kidding. That was insane. Each gulp I get, we get bits of the mackerel fish. Beautiful, beautiful vinegary flavor from the tamarind. A little hint of heat from the chilies. What's kind of really awesome is that they pulverize that fish so, ooh, what is this? Oh, more fish. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That guy's awesome, by the way, he's the owner. Let me try a little bit of this first. Oh, holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. This is juicy. They look like fish chunky. Like sli you know, a slightly spicy, incredibly fragrant, juicy piece of fish. They definitely did not look this juicy. And check this out. What I love about this is, it's pulverized so nicely that when you mix it in with your soup, right, you take any sip of the soup, you're gonna have the little pieces of fish meat in there. So not only do you have the fish flavor, the wonderful fish flavor, you can taste the fish as well. It's kinda like drinking and eating fish soup at the same time. Basically, it turned the laksa soup into, into a form of fish chowder with noodles. That man, that's an innovator. I love the rice noodles because they don't really get soggy when they're sitting in the broth. Hey, uh, let's do this. Uh, let's take a nice spoon for right here. This is just so insanely fulfilling. I mean, not just in your stomach, but, but for your soul. For that part of you that's, that's really hungering for something, you know? This is just an awesome feat of food engineering. And the great thing about this laksa is that you're never gonna feel, in Chinese word we call ni, which is like, you feel like it's too fatty or too oily. The tamarind takes care of that. The beautiful soup, you can just keep on drinking this. You really can. Eating this is kind of like watching the TV show Friends. You know how like when you start watching, you just can't stop? Same thing with this. Take one bite, you already anticipate the next. Well, that was deeply satisfying. I think my soul and my hunger spirits are really happy right now. We just had a great start to this day. Some, some, some of the best curry noodles I've ever had. Took an eating break and ate some roti, and then, and then just this. And I think that's the perfect order because the, the first curry soup, it was so delicious and creamy. And this one is just so refreshing and new. There's certain days where you're eating a lot of food that the more you eat, the more you want to eat. Today's one of those days, so we're gonna keep going. And we're located right next to the market. It's the Cake Lock Sea Temple. Uh, I have a lot of food in my stomach. I would love to walk it off, and I love temples. I love anything historic, and this is just beautiful. So we're gonna walk all the way up. After that walk around the temple, going all the way to the top, I've worked up an appetite. So that's why I'm here at Original Penang Kayu Nasi Kandar. If you don't know, Nasi Kandar is a traditional northern Malaysian dish. It's basically the way I was explained, um, rice just, just smothered in different types of curry. So today I had curry and noodles, now I guess I'm having some curry over rice. Here we go, my plate of nasi kandar. Uh, I got some chicken, I got some fried bitter melon, I got a cuttlefish, some squid, veggies, and basically I just told him to mix up a bunch of curries and just throw them in there. And for rice, you can either get the white rice or long rice. And this is one of my favorite types of rice. Mm. Oh, that curry is good. That's a lot of different curries. My rice is pretty saturated. It's, it's heavy curry flavor. It's, it's not very creamy. It's really spicy. It's almost like a like a like a dried curry flavor. Mm. Well, that curry is nice. I like the curry that was over here. I don't know what it is. And this thing, this is like dried chilies. Um, and the curry here has a great smoky flavor. The curry is too mixed. I can't even tell you guys like what curry is what right now. Um, I just know that this side doesn't taste as good as this side. I mean, it's still good, but not as good. Mmm, I love this chicken. Really crunchy and spicy on the outside. Tender chicken meat is smoky. I really love, I mean, it doesn't look it, but it is toasty crunchy on the outside. Let's try one of these UFO looking bitter melons. I'll be honest with you guys, that might be the first time I actually semi like the bitter melon. Like seriously, in my life. It's all due to this extremely crunchy exterior. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. The bitterness hits you maybe about the 10th or 12th chew. 
but by then your mouth's already filled with a gorgeous flavor of the batter that you barely notice the bitterness. But overall, not nearly the unpleasant bitter experience of a regular a stewed or stir-fried bitter melon. Oh, this is really interesting. This is this massive cuttlefish. I feel like this cuttlefish, the inside of it really has no flavor. You gotta eat it with the crispy outer shell. I feel like I like the crunch more than I like the taste of this item. It's good. I feel like it does go well with rice because the color fish is more mild and it and, and actually goes with the rice, which is uber flavorful right now. It's like saturated rice. I think my favorite things on this plate, rice, definitely 100%. Love it, even with all the curry. Tasty delicious. Love, love, love this chicken. So if you're looking for a plate of really intense flavors that just kind of like fighting with each other, but still um, works, this is definitely a good dish for that. Okay, this is gonna be a little weird. We're, we were taking a break from eating, so we came to the Chu Jetty, which is a uh, UNESCO site. It's a fishing village. Really, really interesting. Uh, obviously, very touristy. Anyway, we're just gonna walk around and, and not eat and just walk around. But now I think we're eating, so we're, we're taking a break from eating by eating. And we're eating this, look at this. We're eating this massive bowl of noodles. Yeah. I could almost take a bath in here. So for the noodles, they have uh, sp uh, special spicy seafood, uh, beef or pork. Anyway, they said to get this, this is supposed to be the best. I don't know how it's gonna taste, but it's kind of fun eating a big bowl of noodles. Oh, here it is. Oh. Yeah, this is the biggest bowl of noodles I think I've ever had. You know what, it kind of reminds me of, of the pho challenge. I think that might have been as big and that was filled with soup. Th but this is the most you can get. I, I got the maximum portion I can get. It's colorful, it's pretty. It's got some scallops, shrimp, um, some calamari, random veggies. Now I know this restaurant's in a very touristy place, so I'm not expecting this to taste like Ichiran, but uh, let's give it a try. Yeah, that's, that's definitely more than a mouthful. I may be kind of crazy. That's actually pretty good. Got a nice seafoody flavor. It's really spicy. And this is the natural spice of the of the uh, of this noodle soup. I didn't actually put anything else in. That's pretty good. All right, the noodles actually looks pretty al dente. I'm serious, guys. Noodles aren't bad. I mean, it's not as uh, chewy as I would like but it's still retaining a nice chew. It soaked up a lot of the great broth flavor. That itself right there, that actually be like a cup of noodle at some places. Yeah, now let's try the seafood. Scallops okay, I mean, it, it was frozen, but they use frozen scallops, which a lot of places do. The shrimps look nice and meaty and jumbo. I mean, it's not the freshest shrimp. It's okay. And this might seem scary, but uh, I've been eating food all day. I think I can finish this. Gotta start tilting my bowl. Wow. That was deeply satisfying. So all in all, this was a good food break. I feel not too bad. I'm assuming that sodium's gonna kick in any second now. Mm. I guess, let's go eat more food. Next place we're at, still noodles. Well, my local friend said I have to come try this. Hokkien Prami Lor Mee. The last time I had this was in Singapore, and it turned out to be one of my favorite dishes on that trip. So, uh, this is a really, really, really popular place. As you can see, the line is long. But I'm gonna go grab a bowl and see how it is. The food day continues. This is Hokkien Prami Mee. I remember loving the heck out of this dish in Singapore. Uh, it's, again, completely different here in Malaysia. Sliced, I think this is tea eggs, pork skin, pork innards. The noodles are a combination of rice noodles and regular lo mein noodles. I feel like I had a lot of combinations today of these two types of noodles, but these are completely different dishes. 
Ugh. Ooh, it's super shrimpy, but not really spicy. The broth, very substantial, a lot, a lot of flavor. I think that's gonna soak really well into these noodles. I like everything I just ate. The noodles, because they're different types, are both gentle and chewy. I feel like everything in here, from the eggs to the uh, pork inners, they all contribute in their own way. I think this is a solid dish. I like it, but this is probably not the best thing I've had today. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is delicious. I do appreciate the sweetness of the prawns, but I feel like this is a tad much. Again, super delicious dish. All my local friends told me that this place is one of the places that does it the best. This can level up a little bit, but in its current state, this is really not standing out for me. Still, I'm gonna knock this down, and we got a couple more places to go. Now, Penang is an island, and you can't come to an island and not have some seafood, right? So, uh, High Boy Fishery. We heard this place is really good. Uh, they got a lot of tanks here with different types of seafood. I, I guess I'm just gonna pick some out, and, and I don't really know how this works, but a lot of this looks pretty good. It's pretty outrageous. First of all, this restaurant is right by the ocean. That's the beach right there, so we're getting a lot of nice sea breeze, and we're really here for this. This in Chinese is called si luo. Not sure what the English is. Um, si is like thorns. As you can see, this shellfish has a bunch of thorns, and luo is kind like a snail, so thorny snail. And the reason I'm eating this is because a couple friends told me that th this is like a special delicacy. That if you come to Penang, you gotta try this. Uh, oh, that's, a that's a tough little bugger. All right, now we're gonna try two thick chopsticks action. It tastes just like a regular sea snail. I mean, it tastes good, it's very fresh, really nothing too fishy about this. A piece of the snail just flew off, so luckily it didn't hit anybody. Oh, here we go. They give you this sweet and sour sauce. Which I like, a little chili, a little garlic. I definitely like these things. They got a nice crunchy texture to them. There's no funkiness to it at all. Just a really nice seafood item. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah. I got some clams and I just told them to uh, make it in their most popular way, and this is what they brought me. So I'm gonna take the little clam, get a little soup in there. Oh, this is good. Oh, hello. This is delicious. I love how fresh these clams are. And the soup, garlic, scallions, vinegar. Oh, that's just full of flavor. I am full of flavor. Mm. It's a little sour, a little spicy. It's just perfect for these clams, perfect. Take those little snails for a swim in the soup. Oh yeah. All right, that works. I've been eating noodles all day, and not only is this just such a wonderful change, but what a delicious change as well. That's fantastic. This is interesting. When they first brought this out, I thought they brought me the wrong dish. I thought they brought me like a, like a General Shows chicken or something, but this is mantis crab. I've never seen it cooked this way before. Now, if you don't know, mantis crab, there's a couple of interesting things about it. One, the, its nickname is it's pissing crab. No, there's no pee in here, but it's nickname is pissing crab. Getting a cook, this, this is so interesting. Sweet and sour, fried, and then cooked with chili, scallions, and onions. And this never had them completely like battered and fried like this before. Look at this. When I took that first bite, I had a couple of reactions. The flavor blew me away. 100% blew me away. Crunchy on the outside, and then when you get to the inside, it's chewy, extremely fragrant, and delicious. Like, absolutely delicious. But the thing is, I don't know if I can taste the shrimp. Hang on, let me bite this in half. Okay, I think I can taste the shrimp more this time, but look at this. The shrimp itself is a, is a tiny portion of this piece of the dish. So I was tasting the batter, I was tasting the crunchy outside shell, this delicious sauce. I mean, the flavor is, is out of this world, it's fantastic. But the first couple bites, if you don't tell me there's shrimp in here, I would have told you it might have been pork. I mean, the sauce, the way it's fried, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's so incredibly good. This will be awesome over rice, by the way. It doesn't look like there, there's like a whole shrimp in here. But regardless of that, this is absolutely mind-blowing dish. 
I love this dish. I mean, first of all, it's pretty, right? It's gorgeous. I mentioned about the crunch, the beautiful sweet and sour spicy sauce, but the fragrant aftertaste that comes with each bite, it's just incredible. I think out of the three dishes I got, these three complement each other pretty well. But what I think I enjoy most is just being able to sit by the ocean. Actually, I wish I was here uh, maybe during sunset, just kind of, and maybe, I don't know, eat some seafood and watch the sun go down. This is just the perfect meal to wrap up my day. Perfect. So today was pretty fun. And guys, this is it. Like I mentioned, this is my last full day in Malaysia. Tomorrow, uh, I'm hitting the Singapore and the rest of my and the rest of my team are heading back to New York. And if you want to see what I did in Singapore and Korea, definitely check out my vlog channel. All that information along with all the places I went to eat at today is listed for you in my description box below. But guys, hopefully you enjoy the videos from these two countries and thank you guys so much for sending in all your recommendations. And to all the local friends who took us around, Tom, Garrick, Anthony, all the guys in the Philippines, Steven, Rick, Jasmine here in Malaysia. You guys were awesome. We couldn't have filmed anything without you. So thank you guys so, so much. Again, thank you all for watching and until we eat again, I'll see you later.